to my channel. Today is a really special video because it is the everything that I met in 2022 video and I'm so pumped. It's actually the second time that I'm recording this video because the first time I didn't really like it but I don't know it's currently <laughs> it's 10 30 p.m and I'm pumped to show you everything I need this year. Let me show you like the satisfying thing where you just leave the massive pile of knits. Okay, it's so heavy. <laughs> God, everything is falling apart. Okay, <laughs> um, yeah, this is it. We have seven sweaters, two summer tops, one vest slash slipover, two gloves, two hats, three hair bows, and one scarf. Sounds good to me. I'm wearing just a black camisole and a pair of jeans as a base layer. And yeah, I will show everything roughly in a chronological order probably except for the accessories because i don't remember when i made them and they will probably be all at the end <laughs> but yeah i will try to show you the wear of the pieces if they show some and I haven't appealed anything for this video in particular, like for this occasion, but yeah, enough rambling for now. Let's get started. Okay, this is the first one. That is actually my first sweater ever. And it's the Sable sweater by Well of Knits. Oh my god, it's very warm. I've knitted this one in kinda this year time, around January, and I used this yarn that is so cool. Like the ply is very interesting. It's like, it's not boucle, but it's just looks kinda like a tornado. <laughs> I don't know, <laughs> kinda. It's a 100% alpaca, it's very soft and cozy. Very, 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 very warm. <laughs> even too warm for the weather here um it's just the simplest of the designs it's two by two turtleneck raglan oversized with two by two ribbings and just kind of a balloonish sleeve with rapid decreases of the wrist i really love the fit it doesn't have short rows that maybe would improve it even more but I don't get very much wear out of this one, basically because of the finishing details. It was my first sweater, so I did like traditional bind off that is just the tightest, like this. I can barely fit my hand through. So yeah, you see, it's not really the most practical. Then even at the bottom is not stretchy at all. like not even a little bit and then the collar was stretching out so much and even bethany suggested to like slip stitch the at the base of the collar with a crochet hook but this makes it like like non-elastic at all like so tight and yeah i love it but i think i can do better and also this yarn is so fluffy and it kind of has flattened a little bit like it's not peeling maybe it is i don't know but it's really kind of difficult to take care of like if you have any idea on how to care of this type of yarn let me know in the comments but i love this color it's so nice and so yeah i think i'm gonna actually unravel this to knit i don't know if i'll knit an actual pattern i think i will just self-drafted myself like folded collar a little bit of short rows then i will just take measurements because i love the overall fit of the sleeves and the body and then just 
do one by one rib with Italian bind off that is my favorite and yes this is the first one oh, and another problem with this sweater is that the gauge like I really like the drape of the of the alpaca and the fact that the gauge is not very tight and dense but at the same time like it's too warm to wear under a coat but it's too holy to wear on its own like if it's windy it's warm but the cold hair passes through the stitches so i don't know i might knit this instead of on a 10 millimeter needle on a nine millimeter needle something like that we will see though then from a very easy peasy beginner friendly garment we have the second ever sweater that is <sighs> i was a little bit of an overachiever i still am but is the jenny sweater by petite knit if you can recognize the stitch pattern and this was a gift for my mom for her birthday and she loves it and i love it too um it's knitted in one strand of knitting for olive merino in the shade um bordeaux that it's really really nice um so a lot to talk about this one um the actual pattern calls for a strand of merino and a strand like fingering weight and a strand of mohair but my mom is not really a fan of mohair so i didn't know <laughs> what gauge was so i just used the recommended needles um and just the strand of this light fingering weight merino i really like the drape but it's a bit holy if you can see here in the raglan but it's not really like that see-through other than here on the creases but we don't see that of course and it's knitted bottom up i used 3.5 3.25 millimeter needles on the ribbing because I didn't have the 2.5 and the biggest modification is the neckline because like uh, I showed my mom and she didn't like the crew neck version like for some reason she doesn't like a double folded neckline that's really confusing to me <laughs> because I love it but whatever and she told me she wanted something like this starbuck, starbuck sweater we have that just, you know, fits with ribbing around the shoulders like this. And so what I did was just trying it on, seeing if I liked the circumference, like if I decreased enough stitches to start knitting the neckband. And then I just started knitting two by two ribbing for like 12 centimeters purled one row to give it a nice edge and then uh, knit again 12 centimeters and I knitted the my live stitches together with the like first row of the collar that is what you usually do when you do a folded collar that's actually the same thing but just wider and longer then after the wash we actually put an elastic band in the in the fold of the neck because it was flaring out so much but overall the fit i really like and yeah for the sizing i just needed the size that my mom fitted in with her bus measurement and i just did that <laughs> completely like forgetting about my gauge being much much tighter and also my row gauge was much smaller so I had to knit so many repeats of this more to get the right length also for the sleeves the yarn is just the loveliest fabric ever is a non-superwash yarn and it's just so comfy and it hasn't peeled a lot actually 
like it's this looks like brand new maybe she hasn't worn it a lot look at these increases for the sleeves though they're amazing i really like them yeah the yoke is kind of deep like my arm hole is here but it was my second ever attempt at making a sweater so we like it and that's everything it matters but yeah i definitely love the drape of this one so next i needed a three by three ribbed scarf for my boyfriend on four millimeter needles it was like a random yarn picked up at my local yarn store it is probably superwash merino i don't have the tag so i don't know but he wears it a lot because yeah he likes wearing scarves and i'm very pleased with the result it took me like it was a marathon <laughs> because i needed an entire 180 centimeter scarf or more in like a week and a half while doing also school and dance practice which was like i probably stayed up every night till like i don't know very late probably 3am something like that let's not tell him but yeah then the next sweater i finished was this one that is the hite hite i guess by the petit knitter and it's actually my first colorwork project because basically when i started knitting i really wanted to get like really good really fast so for each project i wanted to be very different techniques in it so this was in this so in this project i learned of course stranded color work which i find looks pretty nice for a first attempt even though there is a mistake here because there is the spot missing at the center of the flower but i didn't have like any 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 of the brown left actually i think that one cup is like one row shorter because i was playing yarn chicken and in this as you may see i also learned how to do short rows it was the first time that i was doing short rows in a garment and you can see by like the rowing out by knitting flat but yeah german short rows are magical <laughs> i really really enjoy making them and it's knitted in jobs lima in off-white for the main color and the brown color <laughs> i don't remember the name or the number it has tapered sleeves that was the first time that i made a tapered sleeve i mean technically the jenny sweater has tapered sleeves but it's not like top down decreasing is bottom up increasing so it was a little bit different and i did italian bind off for the cuffs and yeah and the all the rib edge it is much i don't know if it's much cropped but it's basically like more cropped than the sample probably because i wanted a more modern look than the because this for me was very like traditional looking color work and then so i wanted it to be a little bit more cropped and it has a turtleneck Jobs Lima is a really lovely yarn, but if you have seen some video of mine, you know that my skin is so sensitive and I think I'm particularly sensitive to wool. And this is like a blend of alpaca and wool. So uh, it's a bit scratchy on me. I have to wear a long sleeve underneath this. And also, I don't know, it's a bit irritating around the neck that's i think why i don't get a lot of wear out of it like i love the fit and the look of it 
but yeah i have to find a solution for this turtleneck because it's killing me like i could maybe sew it down but i think it would just stand up like this because i don't think the yoke would stretch more like it's not stretching more than this so i don't know it was also the first time doing influenced by inga of course a german twisted cast on that is like the stretches thing ever and it's my favorite cast on ever since um working on this as you know i was obsessed i still am with inga and she was working on this full-on color work cardigan that was staked but it was just so full of color work and she like knits color work so fast like faster than i knit stockinette i'm a continental knitter most of the time but then if i if i have to do some increase like make one left and make one right i will use english style because then i think it looks less holy but yeah i majorly knit continental i was trying to knit putting the conscious color on like this part of my knuckle nearest to my heart and then the main color you know on the other side of the knuckle but then I don't know the tension between the two strands was different one was really tight and one was really loose so yeah I even tried not wrapping my yarn around my pinky and just like folding it on top of my index but didn't work then for some parts i just needed english style but then i was like no like it's making me <laughs> it's making me go crazy so i tried like um knitting the contrast color continental and main color english style and this was like it's my favorite like, I don't think I got the hang of it yet, but that is the best method that tried for me. And yeah, I, at the beginning, I really um, religiously catched like floats because again, I saw Inga catching floats like every two stitches. And when you knit color work continental, it's very easy to catch floats. But if you knit, because you don't have to like, twist the yarns and I don't know the yarn doesn't get tangled but if you knit with one of the other two methods it gets really really annoying so I just like for these two charts I think I catch floats which wasn't necessary like every two stitches or something like that and then uh like I did it for a little bit of this one and then I just couldn't do it anymore <laughs> But yeah, uh, I'll take it off so I can show you the floats because they are nice. Ta -da! Or at least I think they look nice. Like it's so cool here if you have an eye contrast that it looks like the the like the like chart is inverted. Like it's a negative of the other one. Very nice. Yeah, you see here I cash floats, but I just got tired of it, so... Then the next sweater that I finished is this one that is the Novato sweater by Nicotomy. I knitted these two sweaters like this and the Hite during the summertime because I knew I was about to go to a cruise in Norway and so you know I wanted to carry a lot of knitwear just to impress you know just to to flex the knitting and uh, this one is so long i don't think i can fit in the frame but i'll put up pictures of how things look i guess uh, it's knitted in drops nepal and i just love it like drops nepal i think it's the like don't quote me on this because i get confused with this a lot but i think it's the same composition of Jobs Lima, just the iron weight version. So it still prickles, <laughs> like on my arms and around here. This yarn is very round and squishy, so I find it very appropriate for cables. 
uh, with this sweater, techniques that I learned were, of course, cables, picking up stitches, uh, doing a folded collar. I mean, I kind of learned that with the Jenny sweater, but whatever. Uh, like a proper crew neck folded collar. Picking up stitches because I had to pick up so many stitches, <laughs> like on the collar. Uh, it's a drop shoulder, so um, for the like the front yoke, then for the sleeves, and then no nothing. That was it. <laughs> but I really loved the um, the shoulder detail. That kind of I mean it's could be done better, but maybe yeah. But it was my first cable project, so I'm so proud of this one. I wore it a ton. It builds a little bit. If you may see, yeah, you may see here. Um, mainly underneath the sleeves and on the sides of the body and just like near the end of the sweater because, you know, it's so long that you can sit on it and maybe the friction with the chair a little bit, but it's not bad at all. And yeah. This is one of my favorites, to be honest. Like, it's so, so, so cozy. I love the length of the sleeves. I did, of course, Italian bind off. And, like, look at the finishing of this. It's just so clean. It looks so store bought. Like, it's just so nice. Because with the heat, I didn't do. Uh, no, let me check. I'm not sure about that. I don't know if I did it, like the two rows of mm, double knitting before the bind off, but like this just looks amazing. Oh my god, I'm just so proud of this. I don't have any yarn left, I used every single thing. I was about to play yarn chicken, but it was nearly, nearly enough. And yeah, I'm getting so hot in this, so I'll take it off. It also like weights so much, but as usual, the drape. I really like doing this to my sweaters. I find it really satisfying. I found it really suitable for our first cable project. I think that's all. I know that like in an hour time, I would, when I finish this video, I will be like, oh my God, I forgot to say that like yeah of course then we can move on to my summer knits that are two and they are the same pattern it's the swift tank by cool stitches it's really 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 simple straightforward top really like it this green cotton was a yarn that my mom had in stash that i just decided to use then i saw i read the pattern wrong basically and i didn't have enough of the green to finish then i was obsessed with the um lilac and green combo so i went to a yarn store and pick up a lilac cotton i like i think that this is by far the knit that got the most wear out of everything that i made this year because like the cotton is just so cool to the touch and the summers in italy are <laughs> very 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 warm i heard many podcasters say their thought about like knitting summer garments and knitting with cotton like uh, Florence by Handmade by Florence doesn't like at all knitting with cotton and she uses merino wool or also for summer garments because she lives in Cambridge and I guess her summer is not as hot as it is here but then there is um Orsonets that I believe like I think that she lives in Rome too and that she, I remember she knitted a beautiful camisole number no. 5 by my favorite things knitwear in Knitting for Olive Merino and then she said like after the summer that it was just 
too much of an optimistic decision to wear a merino wool uh, garment in Italian summer. And I highly agree on that. So yeah, like I wore this nearly every day and it was just so easy to wash. You just throw it into the washing machine and it was just so comfy. It's the most successful knit in my wardrobe, I think. The straps though, like are a bit long and they stretch over time, but yeah. And I also love the drape that cotton gives. Then we have the second version of this top that is a bit short, I would say, but yeah, it's made with this yarn from like, I don't know what yarn it is. <laughs> this, this very interesting yarn, it looks like it's very thick and thin and it looks like a silk wool blend because it's shiny but then it looks like it has wool like spun into it and like i call it my popcorn tank basically because uh when you take it off it, it talk kind of scrunch up because of the unevenness of the yarn i did a modification i did i cord uh straps like spaghetti straps because i have a store-bought uh, top that i really like that has this kind of strap so i wanted to to try to do them basically like if i see it it's really cute now but in the summer as i told you like wool here is not an option like i wore it once and i was sweating all here and it was getting scratchy because the hotter you get the sweatier you get, the more itchy it gets, as everything that exists in the world. I really suggest this pattern for, like, if you're scared of, I guess, more advanced summer knits, like camisoles. But yeah, I think this summer I will graduate to actual, like, normal length, proper camisoles. Like, I really want to do camisole number four by my favorite things knitwear. You see how else you can define this top? It is a popcorn top, come on. <laughs> like the wrong side is so cool because you can see the unevenness even better with the pearls. I also love the drape of summer garments. Okay, next we have this slipover vest that is the Stockholm slipover v-neck by Petit Knit. It's using a black a black yarn that I got from unraveling a sweater that my grandma had knitted many years ago probably. It was a kind of a color work. It was like it wasn't all black so I didn't have enough yarn to make a full garment so I decided that a black vest would be nice and practical. Um, I haven't worn this a ton because I'm not much of a sweater vest person but as I'm seeing this honestly I think I should be more <laughs> of a sweater vest person and wear this thing more. Um, it's knitted in a heavy fingering DK merino on 4mm needles instead of, again, the fingering plus mohair that the pattern calls for. So um, I did a little math with my gauge and I needed a size 2XL to get this size that I think has more positive ease in the body than it's supposed to but yeah uh, i wanted it to be a bit oversized so i think that with the gauge uh, to meet my size like that was recommended for me and one excel could be good but i wanted it to be more oversized so i did a two excel and then like picking up stitches with black is really horrible experience so um yeah and it's not really my 
favorite thing to do to pick up stitches so I think I picked up like something somehow something like 20 stitches less in the in the color uh, I would have liked a more deep v-neck but yeah I kind of stretch it every time that I wash it just in case it gets any deep and I did also Italian bind off for all the edges here. I just love Italian bind off, it's my favorite. Then, and from unraveling that sweater, I also got this red right here that I don't know what to do with, but I think I'll find a use for it. We are reaching the end of the year. Then we have the Marseille sweater by Petit Knit. I'm still shook on how well the, the, the stripes on the sleeves and the body match. That's the length on me. It, it's almost to my crotch area, but not really. Um, I did, of course, Italian bind off for the, the edges. This is the project where I learned truly how to pick up stitches and how to do German short rows because there are so many of these things that I just, I think at this point I truly master them. So um, at the back it calls for, like it's a drop shoulder, so you do the back yoke, then the front yoke. It calls for a Judith magic cast on, but I saw Alexandra's gone video about her Marseille sweater and I did a just traditional long tail cast on and I think it looks okay then is like the trapezium shape of the back is achieved by German short rows and you also do German short rows as you pick up for the front to to slant the shoulders a little bit more then I'm in love with the collar. It's just the neatest thing I ever needed in my life. Um, it's just knitted with drops extra fine merino on all on four millimeter needles except for the ribbing of the neck that is done on three millimeter needles. I had a little bit of an issue with the gauge where I needed flat so like the yoke. I was knitting very tightly because I was scared that it would be rowing out. But then, yeah, being the yarn super wash and the fact that the sleeves weigh down the shoulder and with the fact that I stretched it like to the gods while blocking, um, the, I'm happy with the dropped shoulders because they were dropping enough. I was scared that it wouldn't be the case, but yeah, you also do short rows if you may see to shape a little bit of a sleeve cup just to line up, like to give a better fit for the sleeves, but also to line up the stripes with the body. This yarn is just lovely against the skin. It's merino, it's not scratchy at all. Mm, it just feels like a warm hug to be in and I used it so much since I finished it. It's spilling a little bit underneath the arms, but not as bad as I thought. And yeah, overall this is one of my favorite projects of the year. The only thing about this project, I would say, that they were 91 ends to weave in at the end. Yes, I counted every single one because I wanted the world to know <laughs> that if you need stripes, which is very addicting, you have to weave in so many ends, but it was very, very much worth it in the end. And I used the color soft beige for the gray, it's basically gray, like, come on. Is it beige for you? I don't think it is. Um, so soft beige, light beige, and zero to black for the stripes. 
you are unfamiliar with it, this is the yarn I used. It's Merino Extra Fine by Drops. Then the next sweater I knitted is a gift that I don't have because it's a gift for my boyfriend that I'll try to put up here. It's the uh, Men's Cable Turtleneck by Vogue Knitting 2010-2011 uh, Winter Edition, something like that. And it fits really well. I was so scared that the arms wouldn't fit, but they fit beautifully. It definitely has negative ease in the arms. If you're interested in knowing all my worries about this design, then go watch my mm, latest podcast episode because I talk about it in depth. Um, I did less increases, it's knitted bottom up, and I did less increases than what it's called for because I didn't want it to be too baggy. And overall, it fits really well and i would recommend the pattern if you're not a complete beginner because it was like very brief and like it gave you just the necessary information to knit it doesn't hold your hand as much but it was still nice to knit and yeah lovely pattern and lovely design this is the yarn that i used for the sweater it's drop simple again in this charcoalish color then it is the time of my last finished sweater of the year that is the most complex thing i've ever knit in my life be ready it's blocked it's the marzipan pullover by sari nordland and it's a gift knit for my mom because she gets all the good texture stuff. <laughs> Let me try it on. Okay, here it is with all the cable goodness of this world. Um, yeah, it took me, it felt like it took me one month and a half just to do the color on three millimeter needles and do the entire cable part. Then I was like, yeah, I finally finished. Now I'm ready to split for sleeves. And then the pattern tells you, no, duh, you have eight more centimeters to go. And I was like, can I die? I don't think I will finish it in time. But then, uh, I don't know, <laughs> it just went by really fast. Uh, the color is on three millimeter needles, the cable work it's on four, and the main body it's on 3.5 millimeter needles, and it's two by two ribbing, and it's very long. I mean, it's very long, it's average length, I would say. Then, um, I don't really like, I don't know, the fit of the yoke. Like, it's fine. But maybe it's a little bit deeper than I would like. It's an all right depth, but I think that for this depth, the arms should have been more baggy. I mean, I am aware that two by two ribbing just hugs your body, but it's, I mean, I don't know. It's different. But overall, I'm in love. I'm in love with the color and i was so scared that the fluffiness of the alpaca would just hide too much the cables but then i think that i don't know they pop pretty much they pop in a nice way and they like the little mistakes and unevenness are covered by the fluff but then you know the cables just show and shine and i just love it uh the two yarns are this one that is like a merino wool bought in norway during the cruise at a supermarket in north cape like not in north cape in honningsbuck that is where the ship stopped to go to north cape but it was it is I think more mauve than is showing up on camera. But yeah, my mom really loved this 
and but she she started herself uh an anchor's cardigan by petite knit but then she found the picture on instagram of this and she was like do you know like can you find the pattern and i'm like yes yeah, sure i found it but it was just in english my mom doesn't speak english so she was like okay no then i cannot knit it myself then i was like i will knit it for you for christmas and she loves it and i'm happy she does because it took so long and yeah it's definitely a liberal of love then it's paired with um Drops brushed up pack of silk in this powerful, powerful pink, hot pink. And we wasn't expecting this bright of a pink. Like maybe here you can see better difference between the two. But like I had to use it because it was like November time. It was the 26th of November, so I needed to hurry because I had to do also my boyfriend's sweaters and I had to pass my uni exams, that was also important. But yeah, after my exams, basically in one day I did one sleeve and 10 centimeters of the body, the other day I did the other full sleeve and... Uh, then I finished on the on Christmas Eve. I finished like 15 centimeters of the body and uh, five centimeters of ribbing, and I bound off. I didn't lock it, but it was done. It was done for Christmas Eve. Excuse me, who am I? Okay, but yeah, we are finished with the garments. Let's move on quickly to the accessories. First, let's talk about the hair bows. They, so I knitted two. Um, Augustine's number 22. This year, one was, one was for me in the draft lima leftover from the heat, this color. Um, then I don't have it anymore because I frogged it because um, like for how the bow is constructed, wool and alpaca was just too heavy for that project. And so I unraveled it and I started another bow, <laughs> a December bow, just in the white color because I think it's amazing. Then I needed another version in this yarn for one of my friends at uni. Then I knitted a December bow for the other friend at uni in this yarn that is um, a leftover for from one of my mom's sweater. Then I knitted this hat that is the Pro Soho watch cap hat. Again, in the leftover Drops Lima from the Hita because I had a lot of leftovers. This is a really, really nice hat. I like a tight fitting beanie. But what I have to say is that I knitted the, like the body of the hat, not the crown. A little bit shorter because I was getting impatient and it doesn't like fully cover my ears. <laughs> Which is, you know, a little bit non-practical for the winter. And, like, I really would love the brim to be f more folded. But I haven't knitted the body long enough. Uh, I needed two versions of this. One is this one. And the other one I gifted my boyfriend again. He seemed worthy, though. So... Uh, and I used a yarn, a pretty rustic wool that I bought in Norway again during the cruise. And that was fitting a lot better even on me, but I decided to gift it to him anyway. Then um, I knitted two pairs of fingerless gloves. 
these are the gloves. They are a little bit scratchy because they are made of like an old style, very scratchy finger, fingering with more hair, you know, uh, but you can see, and it's not really fluffy either, <laughs> but this I knitted following uh, Bethany's tutorial and uh, she has a free pattern on her website. They are a little bit of a very fast, straightforward knit. Um, they are not very tight fitting. Like I have, like my like my wrists are so small, so it is kind of very baggy. <laughs> but yeah, you see how small they are. <laughs> but yeah, I don't mind them because I usually tuck these and in the sleeves of my coat so they keep my hands really warm and i find fingerless mittens really nice because you can do a lot with them you can like i i thought they would be very useful at university for when it's really cold yeah, even though for global warming here in italy is actually never really cold but what i thought that they would be good for riding and for using my phone and my computer and my whatever I need to use, basically. So then I knitted another pair that are very different because, yeah, but I wanted two different colors. These are self-drafted. I didn't really want to use a pattern for these. And you can tell that they are a bit short here in the fingers, but whatever, they're fine. They keep me warm again. And they have twisted rib here. First time doing twisted rib, I realized I don't like twisted rib. So I did one row or two rows of twisted rib. And then I did half twisted rib where I just twisted the knit stitches and not the purl stitches because it was really slowing me down then i did these kind of increases that grow across the palm because they look really nice in my opinion i did twisted rib again for the top and the thumb they have italian bind off again because it's my favorite and yeah it's something it's it, it was stash yarn again it's kind of, I think, of a wool, acrylic, and mohair blend, something like that. But yeah, they keep me really, really warm. Now, let me see if I forgot anything. Yeah, I think that's it. These were all my knits for the year. I would say I'm proud of my progress. This was my first year of actually quite intensive obsessive knitting and yeah, let me know what you think down below and also what's your favorite knit of the year and yeah thank you so much uh maybe i will make like i have to think about it but maybe i will make a 2023 knitting plans but i don't know about that we will see and Again, thank you so much for watching and see you next time. Bye!